The NHS is supposed to be this point of pride in British society, but its current state is deeply concerning. We're told again and again that it needs to deliver. I don't agree, it needs to reassure. As Labour prepares to launch its consultation for a neighbourhood health service, the gap between political promises and reality has never been starker. After experiencing two trips to A&E, uh, the, the, the last one yesterday, last night, the frustration of out-of-hours services, the labyrinthine online health systems, uh, the failure to get a GP appointment at any time in the last three weeks, and the, the recognition that one GP practice is completely different to another, uh, it's clear that the system isn't delivering care. It's about maintaining appearances. And whether it's rebranded or not, it doesn't really make too much difference because it's not going to get any better in its present form. West Streeting's vision of neighbourhood health centres where GPs, nurses and care workers collaborate under one roof may sound ideal on paper, but as the College of Royal College of Nursing's Nicola Ranger points out, the NHS is not equipped to deliver on these promises. With nursing numbers on track to be half of what they were two decades ago and chronic underinvestment, these plans appear to be a mirage, just, just to say something to keep the papers happy. The crisis in our community pharmacies further highlights the peril. With many teetering on the edge of financial collapse, Paul Rees of the National Pharmacy Association warns that pharmacies could be shuttered before the grand 10-year plan even comes to fruition. Meanwhile, the idea of wearable technology and integrated health records might impress tech enthusiasts, but without the workforce to support such innovations, the NHS resist, uh, risks becoming a hollow shell, unable to meet patient needs. The first thing the NHS needs to do is to recognise that its bureaucracies are spent and transfer that to the patients, so the patients become the people who control their notes. That will be a starting point. Then the next point is to get rid of a lot of that bureaucracy. So we're only paying for the nurses, the doctors, the people who keep the machinery working, the hospital cleaners and so on. We aren't paying for this etiolated uh, and over-egged over bureaucracy that can't get things right. If it got things right, it would be a different matter. But it doesn't get things right. It makes stupid mistakes because there are three or four different systems and none of them are collaborating. So why are we paying for this? The rhetoric is about, quote, saving the NHS. In reality, it's about um, telling the public, uh, telling a public that is increasingly sceptical while the system crum crumbles beneath them that everything's OK. This is rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. The crisis isn't just about nurses, pharmacists or doctors. It's about the integrity of the health service that was built to serve and no longer serves. What it retains is this authoritarian panache uh, that is hollow and customers, patients recognise it's hollow. Um, it limps from one financial and staffing crisis to another. Without significant new investment, these promises of transformation remain pie in the sky, leaving patients in overcrowded waiting rooms and overstretched professionals struggling to cope. By the way, a health service can be turned round in as little as five years. It's been done in Turkey. It's been done in Greece. And... I don't understand why it can't be done in the UK. Well, I do, because a lot of very rich bureaucrats and um, pencil pushers are anxious to keep their jobs. They don't deserve those jobs because we, the ordinary public, are desperate and anxious and not remotely reassured by the treatment that we are given. Last night, um, I went to a and &E. I eventually left because it just wasn't worth waiting. Uh, there were no chairs. Um, if I wanted to wait anywhere, I had to wait in a um, next to the front door, which was going, 
which is opening and shutting all the time. And I thought, I thought that was unwise. Uh, and, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and earlier, earlier, yeah, I'd, I'd been promised a visit and, uh, and, and, and a, um, and in fact, uh, uh, what is it? I, anyway, it never happened. It never happened. I got a patronising, I got a patronising call from, from some um, person, um, asking me again and again and again, name, address, and all that sort of stuff. It's, um, it's tiresome. Uh, and it needs to change. It needs to change soon. <laughs>